Hi, my name is Matthias, and we're going to talk about APIs in banking. Now, in the previous episodes, we have seen that open banking is really a movement that can be observed all around the world in several countries. And here's a map that actually shows where open banking is currently discussed as a topic. And uh, what you will notice is that there are several colors. So there is a light green color. Light green means that open banking is being discussed there. There is a dark green color. This is the uh, PSD2 area. And PSD2 has been kind of the starting legislation to, together with uh, CMA9, the starting legislation that formed open banking. And it has started out in Europe and the UK. So dark green areas are, are the PSD2 countries. And then you will also see yellow areas. So the yellow areas are areas where open banking is present, but it is not regulated. There is no um, law for open banking. It is happening and is market driven. And then you see gray areas where open banking is not a main topic or not a big concern yet. So open banking happens all around the world. Uh, details differ and it's very difficult to keep an overview of those different regulations. So what is different from country to country is actually whether it's a regulator who's driving the open banking discussion or it's the market. Uh, where it is different depending on the legal framework. So they have very different legal frameworks from country to country. They have different API specifications, also how they handle API specifications. In some countries, API specifications are there to um, prescribe how open banking APIs should look like. In others, there is no such prescription and open banking uh, is handled in more loose terms and is also regulated in more loose terms. And then each, um, each institution kind of has to figure out how they want to implement open banking. Then from a consumer perspective, that of course creates a lot of um, different implement. So in some countries, open banking is already active and uh, it's uh, actually not a big concern anymore because it's a done deal. It's maybe only extended in scope but open banking and the framework itself is already established. In other countries, it's completely new and there's timelines in the future uh, telling banks when and where and how they need to start implementing open banking. And as I said, it's kind of difficult to keep an overview of this. And therefore, we have created the open banking map. It's a web resource that uh, lives on openbankingmap.com. Here is a link. So you can either scan the QR code and directly go there, or you just type in your browser, openbankingmap.com. And you will find open banking initiatives from around the world um, of 30 different countries that um, you can read up on. For example, if you click on one of those countries in the open banking map, you will be directed to the description of this open banking initiative, participating banks, who is the regulator, what is the API specification like, what are the timelines, all those things, all those differentiators from the different open banking initiatives we have seen on the slide before, they are listed there. So you can click on Australia, you will come to this description here, then you can move to New Zealand, you will get another description and so on and so forth. Right, So you basically um, can navigate and learn about open banking in different jurisdictions. This is also recommended uh, that you go to different open banking initiatives around the world to learn how banks are leveraging open banking and also how fintechs are leveraging open banking around the world, what works, what doesn't work, so you can learn best practices and um, maybe get inspired for your own open banking initiative. So check it out, openbankingmap.com. Thanks a lot for watching this video. My name is Matthias, and this video has been sponsored by Software AG.